In this video, I'm introducing the concept of an array of objects. So just to refresh your mind, we've been working with class student, which has four attributes, surname, name, student number, and age. And it also has um, the construct a student that is used to initialize the, the object. So on the right-hand side, you'll see an extract from class student. On the left-hand side is the basic code you'll be using to declare an array containing students so you'll see there you've got student square brackets list equals new student size so this simply says we've got an array list that contains students in the next slides we'll look at this in more detail so let's look at the first part of the declaration student square brackets list what that does is it declares a pointer called list and it says that this pointer could be pointing to an array of students. So at this moment, it's just a pointer. We sometimes refer to it as a dangling pointer. It's not pointing to the array yet. When we get to the part that says new student size, what that does, it, it creates an array containing five elements because size was initialized as five at the top. And then very important to note, it inside the elements of this array is simply pointers so you've got five pointers but again they are null or dangling pointers they could in the future be pointing to an object student but at this moment the five pointers are pointing nowhere so let's see what happens when you say list zero is assigned to new student johns peter one two three four nineteen refresh our minds class student has this constructor student that would initialize the four attributes so if you think of previous videos, a new object, which is an instance of class student, is formed. It has the attributes John, Peter, 1, 2, 3, 4, 19 with their values. And then list 0 simply says the first element in this array now points to this object. So we've created a new object pointed to by list 0. So list zero is not really the object. List zero is the pointer, which points to the object. So the same happens when we say list one. We create a new object uh, with the surname null, name Kurba, student number 2345, age 20. And then we have list one pointing to that object. This slide introduces the concept of an add student method, very similar to what we did in the first semester when we were just adding integers or strings, etc. In this case, add student adds students to the array. So the first eight commands of this method simply requests the surname, name, student number, and age from the user, who then enters it. And then you say list number of element. Reminder from the first semester, the next element in an array to be filled is always element number of elements. Why? Because if an array has three elements, they are in position 0, 1, 2, and the next element to be filled is at position 3. So if an array has number of element elements, the next position to be filled is at position number of element. So at position number of element, the pointer now points to the new student that is being created and you remember to increment number of element. So in the main method we have this for loop that goes from 1 to 3 and it calls the method add student three times. So when x is 1 the user enters John's Peter 1 2 3 4 19 inside the method add student. The object is created and because number of element is 0 point zero point, is zero, point to that object a number of element is increased to 1. The next time the loop is done, x is 2, and now a number of element goes in with the value 1. The user enters surname, name, student number, and age. A new object is created, and list 1 points to this new object. Afterwards, number of element is increased to 2. The same happens when x turns 3. The third time you do the loop, a new object is created, enters the, the surname, name, student number, and age which the user gave to the program. Uh, list 2 points to that object and number of element is increased to 3.